o'clock ABC 10 News at 5 starts right now. There are new developments in the Navy helicopter crash that left five sailors dead. What we know about the moments leading up to the incident. Plus new court documents giving more insight into the time before the disappearance of Maya Milliette. We'll show you the latest paperwork. And we are just one week away from the recall election when President Joe Biden is expected to campaign alongside Governor Gavin Newsom. ABC 10 News at 5 starts now. There is new information in the case of missing Chula Vista mother Maya Miliette. Court documents are giving a little more insight of what life was like before she disappeared. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Lindsay Pena. 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty shows us what's in that new paperwork. In this nine page document, Larry Miliete, husband of missing mother Maya Miliete, argues why his wife's family should not have weekly visitation with the couple's three children. Maya Miliete was last seen in the couple's Chula Vista home on January 7th. Maya's parents are asking the court to see the children every other weekend and virtual visits once a week. They say they've had continuing contact with them since they were born up until their mother's disappearance when Larry cut off all communication. In the filing, Larry says his wife has mental stress and health issues, that family gatherings contributed to Maya's depression. He says Maya's parents live in Moreno Valley and would go almost a year without seeing them, all arguments Maya's family adamantly denies. Miliete says his parents have taken residency with me indefinitely to help raise my children. He says he was open to visitation one to two hours on a weekend in his home, saying my children are not bonded with the maternal side at all. Miliete says his children are already going through a rough patch. He goes on to say his children are very healthy, safe, loved, and are all very well taken care of. They continue to excel in school. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. Now both Miliete and Maya's parents will be in court next week to let a judge hash out visitation. Chula Vista police has named Miliete as a person of interest in Maya's disappearance. Miliete denies those claims, saying Maya left the family. Businesses wrapped up a busy Labor Day weekend at Mission Beach with yet another shooting. An innocent bystander, a woman in her 60s, is expected to be okay after she was shot in the back in a parking lot near Belmont Park. This is now the third shooting in that area this summer. Our ABC 10 reporter Mimi Alcala spoke with another woman who barely missed those bullets. Mimi. Hi, Steve, and she says she was in the back of this camper you see right behind me when those bullets started flying in. A frightening night for merchandise vendors at Mission Beach watching a friend affectionately known as Mama Bear get caught in the crossfire of a shooting. She's just motherly to everyone. She's just a beautiful lady. She's always, you know, God bless you and always wishing people well. Kelly Sexton and her husband are also vendors at Mission Beach selling handmade jewelry. Monday night, they just finished up working and were laying in the back of their camper watching a movie when the gunfire erupted. All of a sudden, I was just startled by just pow, 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 pow. We knew that it wasn't fireworks. She says two bullets hit her windshield. One of them even blew out the driver's side window. If I was sitting in the driver's seat, this shot would have been a headshot. The friend she calls Mama Bear was packing up her vehicle near Kelly's when she was shot in the upper back. Police say a group of four men got into an argument just east of the restrooms. One started shooting at another, running away in the parking lot when the woman was hit. It's the third shooting in this general area this summer. A couple of weeks ago, another innocent bystander, Tim Gauthier, was getting off work when he was shot in the knee near Belmont Park. So thankful that she's going to be okay. Over Labor Day weekend, San Diego police had their command center set up in the South parking lot at Mission Beach. There was a large police presence throughout the weekend, but Kelly says they left not too long before those gunshots erupted Monday night. Experiencing this shooting so close to home has been terrifying for Kelly. She says something needs to be done to address the recent violence. We need to come together as a community. The police have a presence. I don't know what the answers are, but I'm sure willing to be a part of the solution. And the victim was hospitalized last night, but is expected to be OK. We're told she typically sets up right here where you're looking now with her daughter. The suspects have not been caught. Police gave a very vague description and said they might have more information to release tomorrow. Of course, if there are any updates in this case, we will bring that to you. For now, we're live from Mission Beach. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Mimi, thank you. And now to new developments on what happened on board the USS Abraham Lincoln that killed five sailors and injured five more. 
A Department of Defense website updated information that says the helicopter was trying to touch down on the aircraft carrier when it experienced some sort of side to side vibrations. The site says that caused the main rotor to strike the flight deck and fall over the side. One person was rescued from the ocean over the weekend. The military did release the names of five killed. And we just had got the latest COVID numbers into our newsroom. 519 new infections reported in the county tonight and no new deaths across San Diego. With today being an exception, San Diego County is seeing a rise in COVID deaths. Last week, the county reported nearly double the number of deaths from the week prior. Deaths were up from 25 to 49 in just seven days. Dr. Seema Shah, the medical director of the county's epidemiology and immunization department, says the unvaccinated population is contributing to the numbers. What this data is, is showing, and it's pretty clear, that the burden of disease is still in those that are not fully vaccinated. She says that since January, the county has seen 1,322 unvaccinated people die from COVID compared to 21 who were fully vaccinated. She also says those 21 people all had underlying medical conditions. All right, speaking of vaccinations, a new milestone in the battle against COVID. As of today, the White House says 75% of American adults have had at least one dose of the vaccine. More than one and a half million doses were given in the last three days alone. Officials say there's been a surge in the number of people going to get the vaccine. 62% of the total U.S. population now has had at least one dose. 53% are fully vaccinated. Some San Diego employers are seeing an uptick in job applicants now that extended unemployment benefits have expired. Some businesses blame the hiring troubles on extended unemployment benefits that until Saturday gave recipients an extra $300 a week. While some are getting phone calls, others are not seeing a huge rush of applicants, and the San Diego Workforce Partnership says it is not experiencing a spike in demand for its services. At staffing agency Manpower, Chief Executive Phil Blair says there was an uptick, but it's still in employees' market. This is the sort of golden week, right? Because if you go back this week or call your boss this week, you're still in the good guys, right? You came back early. Blair says as more people return to work, he expects signing bonuses and any increases in hourly rates to disappear. And starting today, officers will enforce rules ensuring outdoor parklets are up to code. They have become a fixture and a lifeline for local businesses since the pandemic began. Businesses were told to make a number of changes. Those include changes such as taking off roofs, which violate fire codes. Businesses will have 30 days to fix anything that is out of compliance. If they don't, they could face fines of up to $100 per day. Happening tonight, Poway City leaders are discussing a proposed hike in water rates. The city hopes the increased rates will help pay for an overhaul of the city's water system. Right now, Poway only gets its water through a treatment plant, but a contamination that forced residents to boil their water for days in 2019 also forced the city to find new resources. No decision will come tonight, but the city will set a public hearing date in November for people to weigh in. That meeting begins at 7 o'clock. Governor Newsom's recall election is now just one week away. Today, the White House did announce that President Biden will be hitting the campaign trail to rally support. The president will be here in California early next week. It's not been announced where the two plan to hold those, those events. Happening tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris she will travel to the Bay Area to campaign with Governor Newsom. And over the past several weeks, we have reached out to all of the top profile candidates to see what they would do differently in California. Today, we're hearing from uh, Caitlyn Jenner about what she would do about the pandemic. And I think vaccinations are a good thing, but I also believe in individual freedom. Um, I think it's a choice between the doctor and, and the patient whether it is going to be right for you um, to get the vaccination. I, I, we can't lose that in this country. We are a free country. We can't end government, the strong arm of government, whether it's federal or state governments, to come in and tell you what you're supposed to stick in your arm. Jenner has also said she believed the CDC should determine whether kids wear masks in schools or not. ABC 10 News is your source for the special election. We're going to have live coverage of the governor's recall vote on air and streaming all night on September the 14th.
can stay up to date on your favorite device like Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, your computer, your smartphone. To watch, just download the ABC 10 News app or go to 10news.com for important stories on the biggest issues of all the top candidates. After months of debate and delay, Texas's controversial new voting law is now on the books. ABC's Alex Perche looks at what it does and the continuing pushback against it. Texas's highly controversial voting rights bill now is law, even after Democrats fled the state to keep it from passing. One thing that all Texans can agree, and that is that we must have trust and confidence in our elections. Called the Election Integrity Priority Bill, or SB1, state Republicans argue it makes it easier to vote by expanding the required early voting hours. Critics point to the law's added restrictions. It bans drive through and overnight early voting, something popular in heavily Democrat-leaning Harris County. It also adds new ID requirements for absentee voting. Although there was no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election, both the governor and lieutenant governor claimed the bill will deter alleged cheaters from casting fraudulent votes. The Texas law, it does make it easier than ever before for anybody to go cast a ballot. It does also, however, however make sure that it is harder for people to cheat at the ballot box in Texas. Poll watchers will also have more free movement within a polling place, and election judges who obstruct them could face criminal penalties. The legislation will go into effect on December 3rd and is already being challenged in several lawsuits. The ACLU and others accusing Republican lawmakers of violating the Federal Voting Rights Act and intentionally discriminating against minorities. Texas is among at least 18 states that have enacted new voting restrictions since the 2020 election, according to the Brennan Center for Justice. State House Democrats now looking to the federal government, saying in a statement, we need the U.S. Senate to act immediately on the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Our democracy depends on it. Democrats in Congress want to pass new voting rights protections at the federal level, but have been unable to due to opposition from Senate Republicans. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Meanwhile, Mexico's highest court says it's unconstitutional to penalize abortions. The country's Supreme Court made the unanimous ruling today. The decision makes Mexico the most populous Latin American country to allow abortion. It's a big victory for advocates of women's health and human rights in the majority Roman Catholic nation.